So let's just get to it. Number 50, The Lighthouse. The technical aspects of this movie are just amazing. Like the cinematography, the acting, Willem Dafoe was robbed for a supporting actor, and like the atmosphere, it's one of the spookiest movies I've ever seen. And I'm, and I'm not even that into horror films. Number 49, Ghost Adventures. I used to watch the show like every week before I ditched cable, and it's also like really spooky, just like The Lighthouse, but I'm nostalgic for this more, which is why it's one notch above. Number 48, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is my favorite Tim Burton movie, and like I've always just loved how this movie looks. Like the factory in this movie just, just looks better than the one in Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory, because I guess they just had more money. Number 47, Star Wars, uh, New Hope. The, the first one is my favorite one, mostly because I'm nostalgic for Lego Star Wars, and I didn't watch them a lot growing up, but like they're just still classic sci-fi movies that are just really good. Number 46, the That's Entertainment trilogy. Right now I only have the third one on DVD, but I wanna get all of them soon. I love classic musicals, we'll talk about more of them later, but I'm never gonna watch every single one of them, so watching the best parts of them in three two hour long movies are just really good. Number 45, The Triplets of Belleville. This is my favorite French film and I just like the, the style, the music, and the animation, and also the characters. Like, when you watch this movie you really feel that Madame Souza really cares about Champion, even though there's not a single word in the entire movie except for the songs. Number 44, Apollo 11. This is my favorite documentary. I've always loved space and the moon and like NASA and to just see like 70 millimeter footage of that day, July 16th, 1969, is just amazing to see on Blu-ray. Number 43, The Adventure Begins. Yeah, what could have been, like this was just a great tribute to the show by recreating the first two books in CGI. But I personally don't think it's the best Thomas movie or even the best Thomas movie of 2015. That one goes to number 42, Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. This is the greatest Thomas film ever made, the closest it ever, it ever came to being cinematic. Mattel, they could have kept making movies like this, but no, they just had to destroy the show and just completely change it within three years. Number 41, The Train. I don't own The Train on Blu-ray yet. This movie is about Nazis delivering paintings on a train from France to Germany, and Burt Lancaster and the Allies have to stop them. And I love trains, and this movie has lots of cool shots of trains, and it's also like really suspenseful, like sometimes you wonder if they're gonna make it. Number 40, Shrek. Yeah, this is the first of my nostalgic movies that are on my top 50. I love this movie ever since I was a kid, and it's just like really funny, and like how it subverts like fairy tale tropes, but I don't like it as much as the second one, which we'll talk about later. Number 39, Coraline. Yeah, my brother likes this a lot more than me, but it's still like a great achievement in stop motion, and it's just like really cool and really like scary sometimes. Number 38, Loving Vincent. This movie is literally a work of art. Every single frame is an oil painting that somebody actually painted. I saw this at Real Artways in Hartford, Connecticut, and it's just one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. Number 37, Freaks. Yeah, I don't own the DVD of Freaks either, but I just love Ripley's Believe It or Not. I mean, I have every one of the annuals as well as a bunch of the special editions and this book, uh, Encyclopedia of the Bazaar. And to just see these people that I've read about in these books just in motion in a movie is like really cool. The best character in the movie is Harry Earls. Are you laughing at me? Why do you miss you? Thanks, I'm glad. And because this movie is like really old, it came out in 1932, it's just like really creepy that you just know that there's never going to be another movie like this. Number 36, Swing Time, the most recent addition to this list. I love the Astaire and Rogers movies, I have all 10 of them up there, but this one is my favorite. The romance is great, like Fred Astaire and Rogers, they're always great together. The song and dancing are great, and honestly I think Fred Astaire is one of my favorite actors because I can't really like choose an actor that's working today that I could call my favorite. Number 35, Howl's Moving Castle. I've been I've been recently seeing a lot of Ghibli movies and you'll see some of them later on. And this one is is like really unique and there's a lot of things that just aren't explained, but like the family aspect of like how it gets created over time is just really cool to see. Number 34, The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is probably the most visually unique movie ever made. 
because there's no other movie that looks like this. The songs are great, the stop motion still holds up after almost 30 years, and I like just how dark it is, just how spooky it is. Number 33, Ratatouille. This is the first Pixar movie on this list, and definitely not the last. The way Brad Bird makes animated films is to just like pretend that they're live action, because the script of this movie, if it wasn't about talking rats, it could have been like an indie drama if they just changed some stuff with it. Number 32, Yankee Doodle Dandy. This is just a classic wartime musical. The George Cohan songs are just great, and James Cagney gives one of the best performances of that era. And the sad part is, if anyone made a movie as half as patriotic as this one today, people would try to get it banned. Number 31, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, everything you've heard about this movie is just accurate. It's one of the best animated movies ever, because there's just so much stuff in it, and it just all works. Number 30, Chicago. Right now, this is my favorite movie to win Best Picture at the Oscars, even though I haven't seen all of them. I haven't seen Signs of the Lambs or Schindler's List or Lord of the Rings or Turn of the King or even Parasite, but this is just such a fun musical. Like, the acting and the jazz music is great. Like We Both Reached for the Gun is like one of the best scenes in movie history. Number 29, Easter Parade. The next three after these are all classic musicals, and for this one, it's the Irving Berlin songs are great, and Fred Astaire and Judy Rogers. Judy Rogers. Fred Astaire and Judy Garland just works really well together. Number 28, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Just an iconic movie. Just all the characters are great, and just it's just so great to watch, and just, again, just a classic film. Number 27, White Christmas. Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye are great together, and it's just, again, the Irving Berlin songs are great, and just, just a classic movie. Number 26, School of Rock. This is one of the greatest feel-good movies ever made. Jack Black is just perfect in it, and just some of the best child acting just of ever. Number 25, The Lion King. I didn't grow up with this movie, I've only seen it twice now, but it's just one of the greatest Disney movies ever. Just everything about it just works perfectly and the music is perfect, just like, what else can I say about it? Number 24, Clue. If you watched our five overlooked and underrated movies, you'll hear our thoughts about this, but it's just so funny and just such a good comedy and also also a really good mystery, and like, the characters are just great. Number 23, Die Hard with a Vengeance. This is one of my favorite action movies. Samuel L. Jackson is great in it, and Jeremy Irons is just one of the greatest villains ever. Number, tw number 22, The Hateful Eight. I saw this movie in theaters when I was 14, and it was just the, one of the greatest theater experiences of my life. And just like Clue, it's a really good mystery, and the characters are great. Number 21, Holiday Inn. This is a movie that got me started liking classic musicals, and the story is unique and really cool. Like, Bing Crosby opens up a Holiday Inn that is only open on holidays. Yeah, just watch our overlooked and underrated movies for our thoughts on this. Number 20, The Wizard of Oz. This is my favorite classic musical because it's just as classic as you can get and just all the characters are just perfect in it. Number 19, is Spirited Away. Just like Mononoke, just what else could I say about it? Just everything is just great about it. It all works perfectly together. But there's one thing that like, but there's one thing that gets overlooked for most of the Ghibli movies, and that's the score by Joe Hisaishi. It's just, like, so great. Number 18, Toy Story. Yeah, most of the movies in my top 20 are movies I'm nostalgic for, and this is one of those movies that just could have been awful, but just everything works together perfectly, and it's one of the most quotable movies for me. Even though you try to terminate me, revenge is not an idea we promote on my planet. Oh, so that's okay then. But we're not on my planet. <laughs> Are we? Number 17, Toy Story 2. Yeah, it took everything that made the first movie great and just expanded the world with the toys and just made everything just a little bit better. Number 16, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This is my favorite Indiana Jones movie because it has everything that made Raiders just one of the greatest action movies and just added Sean Connery to it. Number 15, Mulan. This is my favorite Disney movie because it's just so epic. The songs are like some of the best in any Disney movie. And the journey, the hero's journey is just really good. Number 14, Castle in the Sky. This is my favorite Ghibli movie because it's just the perfect adventure fantasy. Like 
every character is great. There's not a single scene that's just out of place or just doesn't expand the world or progress the plot. Number 13, Wally, -E, another perfect Pixar film. The way that Pixar can create emotions with like robots that only have eyes is just some of the greatest ever. Number 12, Young Frankenstein. This is my favorite black and white movie because it's just so hilarious and also just like really atmospheric and spooky when it needs to be. I'm gonna, number 11, I'm gonna cheat again and say the Back to the Future trilogy. I love all three of them, just they're my favorite classic 80s movies and the music is just perfect and I even think the third one is underrated. <sighs> number 10, Arrival. This is just one of the best sci-fi movies ever. Amy Adams is great, and the plot is just so good and original. Like, aliens come down to Earth, so Amy Adams tries to figure out their language, and when she does understand their language, she gets the ability to look into the future, which is just amazing. Number nine, Inside Out. Another almost perfect Pixar movie. Just, I love Pete Docter's movies. This one is just so clever, how it portrays, like, the mind of an 11-year-old, and the journey is so good. Like, there's some times where you, you wonder, like, how are Joe and Sadness gonna get back to Riley? Number eight, The Adventures of Tintin. This is also a perfect adventure movie, but it's above Castle in the Sky because the motion capture is just perfect. Unlike Image Movers movies, there's not a single shot in this movie that doesn't look realistic. It came out nine years ago, and it looks better than most of the, like, PS4 video games that are coming out now. This is my favorite Spielberg movie, and also one of the most overlooked movies just ever. Number seven, Finding a Nemo. This is my childhood right here. Just every scene in this movie just breaks me back to, like, to, like, the 2000s when I just watched it, like, all the time. Just the animation and the music is just one of the best in Pixar history. Number six, The Polar Express. I don't care what you say, this movie is amazing. It's my favorite Christmas movie, and just the atmosphere is just perfect. The music is great, and also the mocap is just isn't even that bad, because it's not as good as Tintin, but from 15 years ago, it just looks really good. Number five, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but again, I don't care. This movie is my favorite guilty pleasure movie of all time, and I understand why people don't like it, and like, when the plot like makes no sense, and the acting is bad, but just, it's just so nostalgic for me. Just like Finding Nemo, and the movies above this, it just brings me back to a better time. And happy 20th anniversary to this movie, because that's today. Number four, Kill Bill. Yeah, I view both of them as one movie, and it's just some of the best action movies ever made. Just like everything in it is just amazing. The action is like some of the best ever. The music is great, and like you really want to see the bride succeed. And, yeah, and now we're getting into the heavy hitters. Number three, Shrek 2. This is just one of the greatest comedies ever made. Like I used to watch this movie so many times as a kid, and it's one of those movies from my childhood that still hold up, unlike movies like Shark Tale or Home on the Range. Yeah. Just everything fits together just so perfectly. Like, the music, the soundtrack, the songs that they choose are just like some of the greatest ever. Number two, The Incredibles. I honestly think this is the greatest film ever made. There is not a single aspect of the film that is not absolutely perfect. Just perfect story, perfect characters, perfect animation for 2004, and the music is my favorite of any movie. So why is it number two? Number one, Monsters, Inc. The Incredibles might be a perfect movie, but this movie is just my childhood in one movie. And I've watched this more times than any other film, and just everything about it is just perfect. Oh, and here's my very special treat. Here is an update of my Blu-rays. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, I've never seen this movie, but I've always wanted to, and now I have it on Blu-ray so I can watch it. Knives Out, one of my favorite movies from last year, and it's just like really good, a really good mystery. The Lego Batman movie, yeah. It's not as good as the first Lego movie, but it's just really funny. The Lego Ninjago movie, yeah, it's not as good as any of the others. This movie was written by nine different people, and you could definitely tell in some scenes, like, there's one scene where the only reason why the cat shows up is because Lloyd can't turn the laser pointer off, but then in the very next scene, Garbodon just tw turns it off like it's nothing. Logan. Yeah, I found this at Goodwill, and it had, like, the Blu-ray, and also this, which has, like, postcards and stuff that make a poster. 
I've never seen any of the any of the X Men movies except for like Days of Future Past, which like I don't remember a lot of. But this one is really good. Oh, and here's something special: Melius Fairy Tales in color. Um, could, can I talk about this? Melie Fairy Tales in color. This is one of the best Blu-rays that we have. This is 13 of Georges Melie's movies from 1899 to 1909. They're all in color, or mostly in color, and it's amazing to see them in Blu-ray because, because I have this. This is 173 of George Melier's movies, but it's on low quality DVD, but this is high quality Blu-ray. It's just amazing to see these films in high quality. <laughs> You're welcome. Mulan, I finally have this movie on Blu-ray. I went a long time without getting the Blu-ray because I didn't want to get the one with Mulan 2. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Just like Mulan, I finally have this on Blu-ray. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Another one of my favorite movies from last year, and for me, this is one of the most quotable movies of the last couple years. Like, George isn't blind! You're the blind one! Come on, what did I tell you? You told me the goddamn truth is what he told me. Have you ever found yourself staring in the failure that is your career? The Phantom of the Opera. We also finally have this on Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray is just really good. Who is the Lantern Man? We will never know. Pixar Short Films Volume 1. I finally have this on Blu-ray. And for the older ones, like from the 80s, like Andre and Wally B and, and Red Stream, I guess they didn't have the original computer files, so they just took film prints of them and then put them on Blu-ray because you could actually see like film grain and they're not like in HD because I guess they're really old. The Princess and the Frog. Yeah, the only reason I have this is because it was in a lot of three with Mulan and Tangled, which I'll show you later. Rocky, the best picture of 1976. Yeah, it's a really good movie. I saw this in my film class at college and I really liked it. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yeah, another really funny movie. You punched me in the boob! Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. Yeah, I have actually haven't seen this yet. Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure. Yeah, I have actually haven't seen this yet because, you know, I'm waiting for my parents to not be home and I just can't wait to see something Thomas-related on Blu-ray. Spy Kids. Yeah, this movie still holds up. It's still, like, really funny and really good. My second favorite Robert Rodriguez movie behind Only the Battle Angel, Tangled. This is the movie that I got in the lot of three with Mulan and Princess and the Frog. And finally, You Can't Take It With You. If you've never heard of this movie, it's the best picture of 1938, and it's a Frank Capra movie you know, the director and the star of It's a Wonderful Life. And and honestly, right now, it's my second favorite Best Picture winner behind Chicago, because it's just, like, really funny and, like, really heartwarming. And this Blu-ray is, like, a digibook. And now the You Can't Take It With You digibook and the La La Land Steelbook are my two most valuable Blu-rays. Oh, and also, I've been getting more Ghibli movies. Before, I've only had Spirited Away. Since they were at Walmart for $15, I got all of these. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Yeah, I ordered this online off of Best Buy, and that's why it doesn't have the slipcover. And yeah, it's really good, but like, there's one thing that I just didn't understand. Like, usually I like Joe Hisaishi scores, but like, once they get to the underground forest, they start playing like 80 synthesizers for some reason. And I just thought that was weird. Castle in the Sky. Yeah, you've, you've, you've seen the video, you know that I love this movie, it's my favorite Ghibli movie. My Neighbor Totoro. Yeah, maybe it's because I didn't grow up with this movie, but I didn't think it's like as good as other Ghibli movies, because because like nothing really happens. And Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, another really cute and fun movie. Whisper of the Heart. Wow, a Ghibli movie that actually takes place in reality. Princess Mononoke. You know, you've heard our thoughts about this. Cat Returns. This is the most underrated Ghibli movie in my opinion. Howl's Moving Castle. You've heard my thoughts about this. Panya, 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 fishy in the sea. Yeah, the animation is really good, and but it's just kind of a little bit more childish than other Ghibli movies. And finally, The Secret World of Arietti, starring Juliet the Vampire from Wizards of Waverly Place, Justin Russo from Wizards of Waverly Place, Joy from Inside Ops, Lego Batman, Rico from Hannah Montana, and the Kangaroo from Martin Years of Who. Yeah, these are the only Ghibli movies that I've seen because, you know, these were the only ones that were at Walmart, and I can't wait for How You Live. Like, whenever that comes out, I'm seeing it in a theater. I 
Marchand. I finished your video. It took me six hours, many bottles of root beer, but it's finished. Oh, whoever it is, they gotta go away or they'll be killed. Thank <laughs> you. 